Welcome to another show of the Investor Guys podcast. Bill, did you have a good 4th of July? I did, sir. And you? Awesome 4th of July. It was great. Uh, and, you know, happy Independence Day. And something else, just really quick, uh, not really political, but uh, patriotic. You know, it is more than just going out and having a picnic and lighting fireworks. And it is the day that we celebrate our independence as a country from colonialism. But it's also a day that we need to be reminded that we celebrate freedom. This is the greatest country in the world. And this day is about our freedom and our ability to do whatever we want to do as Americans. Uh, we have so many people from all over the world who want to come to America because their freedom to be who they want to be, to do what they want to do, uh, is just unmatched by any other place in the country. Uh, one of the gentlemen who I, I hung out with this weekend, his great grandfather or his grandfather came over from the old country, started with a fruit cart and built it into, you know, other businesses, which his father took over, uh, or he worked as a five-year-old, and uh, those opportunities don't exist in other places. And that's what we need to celebrate is our freedom and the opportunities that we have. And that includes real estate. So yeah. I told you it wasn't just wasn't just political, patriotic, and real estate. There's so much real estate around the world. There are countries, many countries, many many countries where you cannot privately own property. There are many countries where you can, but it is prohibitive from a, not only a cost standpoint, but from a structure standpoint, the Caribbean's that way. Um, I love the Caribbean. I love the Caribbean people. What you will see on a lot of the islands there is you will see multiple families going together to build a house and it taking them 10, 15, 20 years to build a house because you have to have the mortgage environment down there. Now, I haven't looked at a mortgage down there in, in six or seven years, so it may have changed, but I kind of doubt it. Um, but at that time, when I looked at a mortgage down there, it was literally a 50% down payment. And most of the mortgages were five years. So it locked most of the commoners the island folk out of home ownership unless they could pay for it. And what they would do is they would band together and then they would build these properties over time and, and they would build them themselves and they would pay for the materials. And of course, once they were done, they were paid for, but it was one of those things that systematically, if you will, uh, really was against private ownership unless you were wealthy. I mean, basically, that's what that amounted to. Yeah. Uh, and so there's a lot of the world that's like that. We are incredibly fortunate to be able to uh, own property independently. And that was one of the things when the craziness, uh, I, don't, I started to say it was at its peak, but I certainly don't think it's calmed down any. You know, the, the guy in, in New York had publicly stated a couple of times it's probably time for private property ownership in America to come to an end. If we do that, uh, then first of all, I, I think we're toast anyway. I, I, the Republicans have no spine. Uh, the Democrats have no conscience. And so they're going to do whatever they do, and they don't care what it does to anybody else. <clears throat> and the Republicans don't have enough balls. Forget spine. They don't have balls to do anything about it. So I think our country's toast, uh, but that's the next move in the further toasting of America is take away private Toasting property America. ownership. And the only way to combat that is for you and I to own property and to own more property. If you do not get involved in, in real estate investing game, because look, that's what we have at stake. When we own property, we fight for the things that we own. As human beings, when somebody tries to take something away from you, look at a two-year-old kid. When somebody tries to take something away from a child, 
they have an absolute fit. Well, when we become adults and somebody tries to take something away from us, then it's a whole different game. It's like, oh, wait a minute, Revolutionary War. Uh, you know, we're not going to allow you to just continue to come in and take things from us. So my encouragement, I think it is patriotic. I think it is, if you love America, you ought to go out and be investing in real estate because it means you have more at stake and you will take a better role in our country and where it goes. And we're at a, an incredibly pivotal point. I mean, uh, and Kevin and I, and probably you as well, uh, are old enough that we've seen pivotal points in our nation's history. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 60s. Yeah, I was born in the mid 50s. So I'm in high school in the late 60s. And you know, going living through all of the Vietnam War, all the sexual revolution, all of the craziness that went on. And when you look at the 60s, uh, it was very similar to what we, uh, a lot of stuff that we see going on today. And I thought, wow, you know, our, our country is just coming apart at the seams. We had the assassination, we had three major assassinations. And so you look at that and, and you go, okay, we, we made it through that. And then we've had a couple other things. We got into the 70s and we had uh, all of the oil crisis and, and uh, the scary economic impact that OPEC had on America and that Carter and Nixon were just head over heels and uh, letting all of that stuff happen. And so we made it through that. And it's just, you, you go back, I saw a great meme the other day that uh, was about fear and it went back to OPEC and and then it had started with all of the viruses that have come through and all of them were the the end of the world for the US, the the bird flu and and uh, it was like for about uh, almost every year for five or six years there was one and then there were a couple of years that skipped and got <clears throat> we have a chance to to make it through this to come out stronger but it's going to take you and I as Americans being involved. And one of the greatest ways to be involved is to own real estate privately. And so that investment property, that's why we fight for things. That's why uh, when America goes to uh, war, it's to keep people from coming in and taking over our country like China is doing very easily right now. We're handing it over to them. Uh, and we fight for that so that we don't uh, end up losing everything. If you go out and buy property, you're gonna care more uh, about what goes on in this country to the point that you're gonna do stuff about it. And we have a, a, an incredibly great generation uh, right now of young people that are um, so many of them that have joined the armed forces. Uh, and and you, you just talk to those people and they understand patriotism. They understand America. Uh, and then we have a lot that uh, have been affected by the, the single strongest, most dangerous terrorist group uh, in America, which is the teachers union. Uh, and those guys just, they're, they're insane. Uh, the teachers union is now supporting fighting uh, anybody that says anything against critical race theory, that they will put money up for people to fight against that and, and you know, those kind of things. Uh, um, well, when you have to have race in the name, uh, that lets you know it's racist. And I heard a, a guy say, look, all you gotta do is, is if you wanna decide whether critical race theory is racist or not, just read it anywhere that it says white, take out white and put in black, anywhere that it says black, take it out and put in white and reread it. And you'd go, ah, this is crazy. Uh, that's because it's it's just pure racism. It's just so also also just a theory as it is in the name, critical race yep. theory. Yep. But we're up on a break. Let's yep. talk Sorry about, about that. what's that? Too much. No worries. Let's let's come back from the break and let's talk about real estate and and our stake in real estate. And, and here's yep. here's why Bill is so passionate about it. Before we go on this break, Bill knows that if you have a stake in America. And we're going to talk about that. But if you have a stake in America, and that means owning real estate, that it's going to be a more passionate topic for you as well, just as it is for Bill and for I, because we have a stake in America. We own actual dirt and the buildings built on it here in the United States. So 
the outcome of what happens to us as a country, not just as patriots, not just as Americans, but also as someone who has a financial stake in this country is very, very important. We'll be back in just a minute. Las Vegas isn't only a great city to visit, it's a great city to invest in. Bill and I both have been investing in the Vegas area for decades. And that's one of the reasons why we have our real estate buyers event in Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out the same strategies, the same types of properties, the resources that we're using here on the ground, the people that we're using here on the ground to get the same types of returns that we're getting here in Las Vegas. The Real Estate Buyers Event, that's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about this event, find out where we're gonna be, including where we're gonna be in Vegas next and register. We'll see you soon. A lot of real estate training programs claim that they will make you a millionaire, but how many of them will guarantee it? The Millionaire Blueprint comes with a millionaire guarantee. I guarantee that if you use the strategies and you use the formulas that you will learn in the Millionaire Blueprint, you will be a millionaire. I guarantee that with a double your money back guarantee. Whether you have hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest or absolutely nothing, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to start investing and be a millionaire guaranteed. Now, I can't tell you all about it in this short amount of time. So go to the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. That's the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. Watch the videos there. Read about the guarantee. Read more about what we offer with the millionaire blueprint. Get signed up. I'll see you in Palm Beach. We are back from our break. And you know, I wanted to point out, and Bill alluded to this earlier in the first segment, there are countries where you actually are not even able to get a mortgage to purchase a property. There are countries where you have to pay cash for a property. Uh, oftentimes, those properties, if somebody does have property, it's handed down from them through the generations. It was, it was money that was saved by families for generations and generations in order to purchase it and hand it down. Uh, there are countries that are just now starting to have a mortgage process. There are other countries where if you own more than a handful of properties, you are on the radar of the government and the government will literally come and start taking those properties from you or start taking money from you or anything else because they figure you're doing too well. That is oppression. That is why people flee those countries and come to the United States. And then one more really quick example, and and, and Cuba is not the only example of this. In Cuba, there is no property ownership. The government owns all of the real estate. Now, it's the same in China as well. It's just a different type of, of way that it works. But the home that your parents lived in and grandparents lived in during the revolution is likely the house that you would still live in. Uh, you're not able to sell that. So your grandparents may have had a family of say seven or eight people and you may be in a large home and most people say hey that's great but when you're in cuba and you're making 24 dollars a month you're not able to maintain this large home and when you go to cuba you will see these big beautiful houses on the esplanade facing the ocean that are just in in horrific disrepair the paint has come off of them but not just peeling it, it peeled off 20 years ago you know uh, they're not able to take care of this home. They are not able to sell that house because they don't own that house. It's illegal for them to sell that house. Uh, it is illegal for someone else to say, hey, I, I want to buy that house from you. What they do instead is a black market trade that if they get caught, technically they can go to jail for. The government knows that it happens, but it technically they can go to jail for. So what would happen was a family that is in a smaller unit that happens to be bigger, who wants that bigger house, will trade the smaller house for the bigger house. It's weird how that works, but in Cuba, that is, that is a reality. So we have an opportunity as Americans to purchase real estate. You know, I, I tell people all the time, get out and travel. You'd be surprised that most people don't have two cars in the driveway. Most people don't have a television in, in every room, when you go to any other country, and I'm not talking about third world countries, I'm talking about when you go to Japan, when you go to Korea, when you go to Europe, you will see most people do not have a television in every single room. Most people don't have two or three cars in the driveway. Understand the opportunities that we have here and you will appreciate them more 
and take advantage of them more. And that is why I love the United States for being able to buy real estate. Um, anybody can buy real estate in the United States. As Americans, we can't buy real estate. I can't, I loved Korea. I lived in Korea. I can't own real estate in Korea because I'm not a Korean citizen. I'm not a Korean national. I can't technically legally own real estate in Mexico because I'm not a Mexican national. I can set up a trust or I can set up a corporation to do it. Um, there are countries that I can't own real estate in. China is one of them because I'm not a national. However, anybody from any other country in the world can come to the United States, purchase real estate, purchase a piece of the United States, a piece of the American dream and own it. And that is something that is significant and substantial. And if you don't appreciate that, you're watching the wrong show because this is about investing in real estate, investing in yourself and investing in your community and your country and everything else that has to do with it. Now, without getting off on a crazy tangent, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what did you want to say? Well, right now, the markets are just smoking hot. I, I haven't talked to anybody, and, and you and I both have relationships all over the country, and I haven't talked to anybody that has gone, well, you know, uh, the market's pretty soft here, and prices, I mean, it's just crazy hot everywhere where you and I are, it's just white hot. And so supply becomes a huge issue as an investor. And so what we tend to do right now, one of the strategies that still is effective in today's market is the rehab flip strategy. And the reason that it is still effective is because we have the opportunity. What we've always taught our students is when they go out and they're looking for a flip property, I want it in bad condition. And so right now, those are really the only places we can find inventory are those properties that you can't get a mortgage on because of the condition of the property. So they're out of the mainstream because if you can get a mortgage on it, somebody's willing to take that chance right now. And even though it's a mess, uh, if you can get a mortgage on it, if it's that good, which simply means it's inhabitable, then typically they're like, hey, you know, it's it's selling anyway. It's those properties that are not inhabitable, not insurable, not mortgageable today. And when I say they're not mortgageable, that doesn't mean you can't get hard money on them. That means that you just can't get a traditional mortgage on them, uh, a, a owner-occupied mortgage. So they won't pass those inspection the properties, the... yeah, those are the properties that are still available uh, and you got to hunt and are they work to repair them? Absolutely they are, but those are deals that are still viable. And so you have to go out and, and search the market and you got to work with your real estate agents uh, and you got to tell them, hey, look, I need a below market condition property. When you see that, that trashed out house, it's abandoned, whatever it happens to be. Now, you need to check with the city and see the properties that the city has taken over that are on the list to be bulldozed and work with the city attorneys to see if you can buy that. And you can. You have to negotiate with them and you have to negotiate a repair time because once you own it, they typically are going to say, you've got six months, nine months, a year, three months, whatever uh, their time frame is locally uh, to get this property inhabitable, or we're going to come in and bulldoze it anyway. Yeah, and so you got to make sure that uh, your ducks are in a row when you go do that, but that's another place. Those are, are again, condemned property owned by the city. Uh, and the city would much rather have those properties refurbished, have taxpayers in them, get those properties back on the tax roll than simply turning it into a vacant lot. But it will be turned into a vacant lot at some point. And so what we want to do is, yeah, that's a great lead source when you got an incredibly hot market. Look at your city, go down and talk to um, the property departments in the cities, go down and talk to the tax department and let them point you in the right direction so that you get to the right people to find out what does my city own. And a lot of times they're going to tell you crazy stuff like, well, um, yeah, we own some property, but 
we really don't have a, uh, a list available. I, I know we're up on break here. So we'll go with the list with the city when we get back from break. Hang around for more Investor Guides podcast. Back in a minute. Are you ready to start adding performing properties to your portfolio, high performing properties to your portfolio? If so, check out the Real Estate Buyers event. Once a month, with the exception of December, Bill and I host a Real Estate Buyers event in a high performing market where he and I are both investing. He and I both have experience. We share our experiences, our resources, what to buy, what not to buy, where to buy, where not to buy, what strategies to use to get great returns on your investment in these markets. If you want to read more about it and you want to join us for one of these future real estate buyers events, go to realestatebuyersevent.com. That's realestatebuyersevent.com. We'll see you there. Hi, my name is Kevin Mills. I have a real estate training program that is so powerful, I will back it up with a double your money back guarantee that it will make you a millionaire. That's right. Double your money back guarantee that you will be a millionaire if you use what you learn in the Millionaire Blueprint. I call it the Guaranteed Millionaire Blueprint. And you can read more about it and watch more videos at GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. That's GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. Check it out. All the information is there. are back and Bill's going to talk about the list of available properties that the city owns. And these are city owned properties that they have already taken possession of. And typically the way they do that is by leaning the property. And when the homeowner or property owner doesn't pay those liens, uh, they take back the property. So I want to talk about as soon as we talk about the list, I want to talk about catching it in the lien status as well, because that's what we're doing right now a lot in South Florida. And then one other strategy that uh, I'm looking at that would maybe possibly make some sense for the rest of you. So let's continue on with that list. So one of the things you can do is, is you start uh, when you go down to the tax office and you you get to the point and you're asking for I want to, to get to the list of the houses that are condemned, that are going to be bulldozed. And I actually had Tarrant County tell me, well, uh, we don't have a list like that. There's there's not a, a list like what you're talking about. And I went, oh, I was really uh, under the wrong impression. I thought there were properties that the county owns that are condemned. And the lady goes, well, there are. And I said, and so we know the condemned list, somebody from the county is going to go, or the city is going to take a bulldozer and go and level that lot. Isn't that how that works? And she said, yeah, that's, that's how it works. Once we hit a certain point, uh, and I'm like, okay, so the guy that's driving that bulldozer, he wakes up today and he goes, hmm, uh, I think I'm going to go to 814 Main Street and I'm taking it down. And hopefully nobody's living in it. And hopefully it's on the condemned list that doesn't exist. Uh, or does he actually have direction from somebody? Oh, here's the houses that need to be taken down. And she said, well, of course, he knows where he's supposed to go. And I'm like, okay, that's all I'm asking for is a copy of that. Well, we don't provide that. I'm like, I understand that's what you're saying, but you are a public entity. You are a county. I have the right as a taxpayer to that information. And she finally got frustrated with me and went and got her supervisor. And the supervisor goes, oh, yeah, just give me a minute. I can get that for you. So no going in, they exist. And no going in that you have the right to it because you're a taxpayer. And then that gives you some opportunities to pick up some properties that everybody else may not be looking at. Now, you know, when you see those, they are a mess. Uh, and you may look at some of them and go, not interested. Uh, but some of them you may be surprised that uh, they're not much more than a typical rehab. So. Uh, it just depends, which has nothing that just because on the condemned list uh, doesn't necessarily mean that's because of condition. Many times it's like what Kevin was talking about. It's monetary uh, and it's not condition. Which brings me to the point that I wanted to make. So the two ways that these properties are going to end up on this list is first, 
if there's liens. So what will happen is when somebody has just lost interest in their properties, we call them abandoned properties. They're not mowing the lawns. They're not taking care of the properties. People have broken windows. They're not fixing the windows, not boarded up. There's, there's no sense of security or anything else. So the city starts issuing liens because they know that there's one of two things that are going to happen. You're going to say, I don't want to pay this lien and you're going to forfeit the property and they can take care of the problem themselves. Or they're going, you're going to fix it because you don't want to have to keep paying all of these liens and you're going to fix it. And you're going to make it a good property again. The other way that the city ends up with these properties is they seize it for illicit activities. Um, so Cleveland and other cities uh, if a city is being used as a crack house or a flop house or something like that, the city will come in there, they will clear it out, they will seize the house, and literally within a week or two, they will bulldoze that house so that it is no longer a problem because the person who owns that property clearly doesn't care. Now, a lot of times you'll find properties that are in good condition, they're dirty, they stink because they've had people living in them, you know, illicitly, but it's nothing that you can't deal with. If you can find a way to get a hold of those properties before there's a bulldozer that's pushing them down, then you've got a great deal. The city gives them away literally for thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands of dollars, but thousands of dollars. Now, one of the things that we're doing here in South Florida, because real estate is so difficult to find on the retail market, uh, we are looking for properties that have liens. People still own the properties, but now there are liens piling up. Now, properties that I just got recently, actually recently, I say last year, in Daytona Beach, many of them had liens on them. And that made it easier for me to get them from the owner because they didn't want to have to deal with the owners. Uh, they were absentee. They weren't even in the state. That's the situation you want to look at. If there are liens on a property, and you can find out a list of that as well from the city. And you want liens that are outstanding, not just liens for little things here and there. You want outstanding liens and multiple liens. Uh, go talk to the homeowner and say, hey, you know what? You're about to lose this property. Let me pay the liens so that you don't have this hanging over you. And let's get rid of this property. Let's do a traditional transfer. I'll pay off those liens. I'll give you a couple thousand dollars and, and everybody's happy. So look for that scenario. Real quick before we run out of time, another thing that is working really well right now, and Bill and I talk about infill and we both love infill, but with the cost of building materials and permitting and everything else going through the roof right now, uh, you would probably second guess whether or not you want to do uh, new construction. And new construction, unfortunately, is the only option for this housing demand that we have right now. If we don't build new houses, we're still going to, it's going to be crazier. Uh, a lot of new construction in the North, especially, has just literally ceased because materials have gone up sometimes over 100%. And, and it's just not affordable anymore. Fortunately, we built most of our properties here with concrete block and concrete has not gone up a whole lot in cost, fortunately. Um, but one of the things that is a possibility for you, many, many, many manufactured homes, and I say modular homes and I usually say they're not trailer homes, but I'm talking about trailer homes now, okay? They've already been built. They're sitting on lots lined up with nowhere to go. Go purchase those because those have not been affected by the additional cost of the manufacturing, the additional cost of the materials or anything else. Many of them were built pre-COVID. Find a lot where you can put them on. There are requirements where a city has to allow a manufactured home. They cannot discriminate against a manufactured home. So find out what requirements you have to meet from the city in order to place a manufactured home on an infill lot where you're not gonna get your neighbors all upset or angry or find a larger space where you can actually build yourself a, a, a mobile home park. You know, Put perhaps 10 units there yourself and make the other 30 or 40 spaces available for lease. Um, this is a great stop gap for people who are looking for a property to get into that they just can't find it right now. And it's a great investment opportunity for you because these mobile homes don't cost a lot. And the land with nothing on it doesn't cost that much either, especially since people are looking for houses right now. So consider that as an option in the market where you are. Yep. Anything to add on that? I know you love uh, mobile home parks. Mobile home parks. I, I've been involved in three mobile home parks, uh, all in Florida. Uh, great investments. Single lot mobile homes, also just cash cows. Um, you have to... 
And a lot of people go, I, I don't want to be involved with trailers and all that. Get over yourself. Real estate is about the numbers. And my dad taught me through many different examples. It's all about the return. And if I can go in and I can get this property, I may want to buy a big, gorgeous house because that fits my self-image more. But I can make more money over here from a percentage on return from doing these mobile homes. Uh, and that, that allows you quickly to start looking at what's more important to me um, that I don't own a mobile home or that I get an incredibly attractive rate of return. I'm typically going to side with the rate of return. It, they, they're great money makers, and we need to do an entire show just on mobile home yeah, parks. Yeah, we need to do that. Yeah, and, um, we need to do that. We're running out of time, but consider the different options. We, we have to think outside of the box, especially in the market right now, because you're not going to be able to go to the MLS and you're not going to be find. You're not going to, I don't want to say you're never going to find, you're just not as likely to find as many great deals as we were able to find a couple of years ago, or as we're going to be able to find in a few years from now when all this is over. So right now, instead of letting that stop you from investing, you know, change your strategies. And one other, other suggestion, okay? If you really feel like you have to have downtime, if you really feel like you need to just wait this, this market out, and I know people who are doing that, use this time to educate yourself. Use this time to get more skills under your belt so that when the market changes and you're happy with it, you are out the gate and ready to explode with all this newfound wisdom. Uh, that wraps up our show, I think. Very good, sir. I, I will oh, see another good one. Thank you for being with us, everybody. I will see you soon, Bill. And I will talk to the rest of you guys with Bill on Thursday. Have a great week.